Hi, this is Gary with episode 99 of MacMost Now. Let's answer some viewer email. The first question comes from Dan. Can you give me an idea for a good spam filter? I use MacMail and have tried using rules. I think I'm about up to 50. No matter how I put them in, the spam still gets through. Well Dan, the Apple Mail program has pretty good spam filters in it, but there may be a reason it works better for some people than for others. For me, I use a host that hosts my domain name and my, all my email and they use Spam Assassin on their server. So Spam Assassin is a program that runs on the server and filters mail as it comes in. Now what Spam Assassin does is it doesn't actually usually get rid of the email, it just kind of tags it, these hidden tags that you normally don't see. And it tags it with a level of spam. It checks things like blacklists and typical places that spam come from and the content of the email message. And then it puts this little rating in the email of how spammy the mail seems to be. Then I find that Apple's mail program pays attention to this stuff and actually filters email a little bit better based on these ratings. In addition, you could build some tags yourself in the rules. Uh, if you look in the headings for a mail that goes through Spam Assassin you'll see that it gives a star rating for how spammy the mail may be. So the solution may be to actually move your email to another host that uses Spam Assassin or see if your current host supports Spam Assassin. You may just need to turn it on. But if you don't have control of that there may be a better solution. You can go ahead and use a third party email filtering program. I tried out SpamSiv and you could try that one out too. And it seems to use Bayesian filtering to go ahead and look at the content of your email and compare it to emails you've gotten in the past. You can kind of train it to recognize spam email. So I haven't tried it for a long period of time so I don't know how well it works but you can give it a go. It's got a free trial. I recently did an episode about Firefox and Sam wrote in with this question. Does Firefox do private browsing like Safari? Now unfortunately it looks like it doesn't. Firefox 3 has left out private browsing for now, though that might be added in the future, and maybe add-ons that help you. Here's what Sam's talking about. If you go into Safari and choose in the Safari menu, there's a private browsing option. And this one will allow you to basically turn off all caching, history, saving passwords, everything that leaves a paper trail. So it's built for basically using Safari in say a library or on somebody else's computer. Joey had a question about printers. I live in a mixed Mac and PC home and I want all the computers in my house to be able to print to one printer. I found a way to do this but the computer the printer is connected to would always have to be turned on. Any suggestions? I know exactly what you're talking about Joey and the way I've solved it is by only buying network capable printers. These are printers that actually plug into the Ethernet uh, of your home or office network or sometimes they have wireless connection. So these printers don't rely on any one computer to be on. They kind of work as their own computer that only does one thing. That's print. And the great thing is you can print from any computer in the office. No specific machine has to be on and sometimes you can even print from outside of your network and have the printout sitting there waiting for you when you get to the printer. The last question today is from Kaylin. Sometimes I need to know the size of a bunch of folders. But when I select them and click on Get Info, a separate information window opens for each of the folders. Is there a way to open a single information window for all folders from which I can see their combined size? Yes indeed there is a way to do this. So here's what Kaylin's talking about. You click on Documents and Downloads and I do Command I, I get two windows here showing me the size of each of the folders. Now some may have noticed that if you click on 10 or more files or folders you actually get a combined window for them. But you could do that for any amount of folders by simply holding the Option key down. So I'm going to select these two folders again. I'm going to do Command and Option and I and I get a single window. It says Multiple Item Info. And there I get the combined size of all those folders. That's all the questions for today. If you've got a question for me, you can email me at questions at macmost.com. Also, remember to follow me on Twitter. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.